happy Thursday. Thanks for joining me here tonight. We are continuing to stitch our Stitchin' Hedgy bag. So this is our little drawstring bag. It is the embroidery of the month this month, and we're gonna keep working on it. So thank you, thanks again, guys, for joining me. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for the beginning crafter. And I'm here every weeknight at uh, 8.30 p.m. Central Time. That's 9.30 Eastern and 6.30 Pacific. And it's a time that we can relax and craft together and I work on projects from beginning to end so you can see the whole process along the way. Uh, so again, today we are continuing with the Stitch and Hedgy, uh, Stitch and Hedgy kit here. So uh, this is the from the bundle and we do still have bundles available so they will be available until the end of the month. So that's just like a week and a half away already, you guys. June is... Phew, out of here. <laughs> so, all right, here again is how far we are. And I think tonight we are going to work on some of these little flowers. So we'll do flowers and French knots today. So French knots and lazy daisy stitches. And I think some satin stitch too. So that is the plan. I'm going to flip you around. Let's get going here right away. Okay. Thank you everyone for joining me here. I think we got pretty far on this fella yesterday. So, all right, I'm gonna just see some of your comments quick. All right, hello everyone. Hope all is doing well. April saying hello from Illinois. Uh, all right, you guys, let's get to it. So tonight, well, last night we, we had did basically this whole area and we started this uh, tonight I think I would like to I think first we'll go through French knots and uh, uh, the three things you might be doing wrong for a French knot like if you have trouble with French knots this might be why uh, so we'll we'll stitch these guys down here a few of them you know what maybe we'll just do this whole bottom little French knot area and then we'll move to this area up here. I think that's a good way of doing it. So I'm going to get all of this in. I could do this craft a happy life while I'm at it, but I think, I think I'd like to get this area up here tonight. Uh, so you guys, tomorrow I may or may not be here. And if I'm here, it's going to be a little bit different. So uh, I'm going to be out of town tomorrow. So we're actually going to see uh, uh, see John's parents and uh, they're moving to Wisconsin, which is awesome. So, uh, but, and they found a place and they want us to look at it, um, look at it with them. So we are going to be out doing that tomorrow. And I'm not sure, not quite sure how I'll be able to do a Facebook live in the evening or, or a YouTube live in the evening. So, um, I'm, I think I'm going to try and bring this stuff with me still. Uh, I'm just not quite sure how it'll work. So it will probably, just so you guys know, it'll probably be on, on um, Facebook just because um, when I'm offsite, I'll only be able to do, I'll only be able to go on one service. Uh, and I think Facebook works better with the phone here. <laughs> so uh, that that may be what's going to happen tomorrow. So just, just so you all know. Otherwise, I'll be back here on Monday. I know I want to finish this guy yet, though, this month. And I also wanted to make that that liner. So before the end of the month, we might have to take another day or two to kind of play around and, and work on this some more. So um, I want to get that through before the end of the month, though. All right, I'm going to just weave in my ends to get started, and I'm going to show you the French knot stuff, you guys. All right, just scanning. All right, let's weave through the ends here. So it does look, actually, so someone's asking if Facebook is freezing a little bit tonight. So my stream looks like it's okay, but it does look on Facebook, like it might be popping in and out a little bit. So I don't know why that is. Uh, YouTube looks okay though. So um, it might be a YouTube evening. Uh, might win out tonight. 
Okay, so uh, I'm gonna do some little French knots here. So I'll show you how I do them, and I, uh, then I'll show you a couple things that you might be doing wrong. Um, and actually, I might... Let me show you guys the things you... Well, we'll do one, and then I'll show you the things that you might be doing wrong, but I think I might pull all of this out and redo it when we get to that, when we get uh, done with it. So this is, this is how I do a French knot. I come up on one side of my dot here and then I'm going to hold my thread away from the fabric here. So I'm holding that with my left hand and then I'm pointing my needle towards my hand away from the fabric. I'm not pointing towards the fabric. So I'm pointing away from the fabric towards my left hand. Then uh, where I'm holding it here, like two inches or so away, I'm going to wrap around twice. And then I'm going to put my fingers on that wrapping. So at that point, uh, I'm going to turn around and now I'm going to point, uh, point the needle towards the fabric. And then I'm going to put the needle in on the other side of that dot. So not the same hole. And I'm going to put the needle in halfway and then pull on the thread. So it's up against the needle and the fabric. And then I'm going to put my finger on top of those loops and I'm going to pull just slowly through to the other side. But my, my finger is holding those loops down right now. All right, and I think I let those loops go a little bit. So that's, that's a little bit of a goofy French knot, but, um, and this is actually one of the errors and I'll show you that in a little bit. So I'm going to do one more good one. Uh, that, that one wasn't all that great. I'm just trying to grab all of this back fabric here. So let's try that again. There we go. Make sure that those loops are tight against the fabric and the needle there. Yeah, you guys, I don't think Facebook is working all that well tonight. I'm just going to peek quick. Yeah, for some reason, it looks like Facebook is... Um, Facebook isn't working all that well tonight. So I would, uh, if you guys are on uh, um, Facebook, I would kind of suggest tonight to hop over onto YouTube. Um, I'm at YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies. So uh, so you might want to head over and do that. I'll, I'll check your comments to see if other people are having trouble. Okay. It looks like it's, yeah, it's, it looks like it's coming in and out. So um, just to let you guys know. Okay, so here are some things that you might be doing wrong with threads, uh, French knots. Can more threads be used for bigger French knots? Absolutely, Kathy. So you could do the six strands of embroidery floss. You can even wrap it around three times. I wouldn't wrap more than three. Uh, but yes, for larger French knots, feel free to totally use... Um, more more thread. I think that'd be great. All right, here's one error that I see sometimes, and that is, and you, you could be doing everything else correctly, but if you, instead of pointing your needle towards your left hand here, away from the fabric, if you point towards the fabric and wrap around, you hold those loops, and you go... Um, put your needle back in, you are going to get you are going to get just a little small line. Like you're not going to get it in a knot at all. You're actually going to just get a tiny little stitch. So if you are getting just a tiny little stitch like this, you're not getting a knot at all. I'm going to put another one right here. I'm going to cut all these away. Uh, but that is from pointing your needle towards the fabric instead of pointing away. So we start by pointing away, then we wrap, and then after we are holding those threads down, then we point towards. So we're pointing away to start out and then point towards after we get those loops. So that's error number one. If you're getting this little one little stitch, that's, uh, that's what's happening. Okay. So the next thing you might be doing 
is going in the exact same hole. So I I didn't do it on a on one of these dots. I ran out of dots over here. So I'm going to just pretend that there's a dot right here. But if I am making the knot just how I am everywhere else, um, I'm, I'm going to go away, wrap it around. I'm going to hold those loops. But now if I go in the exact same hole, you know, instead of going, like I like going across the dot, but if you go right in the same hole, um, which is kind of what your instinct will want to do. It'll want to go in that same place that you came, came through at the beginning. Uh, but if you go in the same hole, you risk, uh, let's see if I can do it. You risk your knot being pulled there we go, pulled all the way to the back. So I pulled the needle, I pulled the knot through and it left like a little hole there. Uh, so uh, that's because the fabric spread out enough that it was big enough that my, my knot could go all the way through. So that's no good. So that's why we wanna, we wanna put a few little threads in between. So if I would do that again, All right, then when I go back, I'm not gonna wanna go in the same hole. Let's go a couple threads over. So two or three threads over, you can see that gap. And just having those couple threads there will, will be enough that the knot won't break through to the back. So there we go, I can pull on this. And you know, I could pull really hard and tear the fabric, but um, most likely, uh, we're good to go. So that's that could be the thing uh, number two. So number two, you don't want to go in the exact same hole, uh, the exact same place that you came out of there. So those are mistake one, mistake two. Last mistake is if you're getting, and, uh, and you can see them here, I got some pretty loopy French knots. If you're getting a loopy French knots like this, uh, then this is the error you might be doing. So I'm gonna make my French knot again. I'm gonna do everything correct, except at this part, I might just start pulling my needle through. I might not have pulled pulled um, them close. So let's say even if I if I pulled the thread close to the needle here, and I just start pulling through, but I'm but I don't um, I don't. I don't hold down my threads or anything, then I risk, let's see if I can exaggerate it a little bit. I, I risk just having um, kind of a more loopier, basically like this. I didn't, I didn't hold down those loops enough. Let's see if I can really exaggerate it. So, all right, let's do another one. Let's say I don't even pull it close and I'm, then I just pull this knot through there you go. You might be getting a big, crazy, loopy knot like that. Um, and and to fix that, I mean, you can't really fix it once it's there, but to, to change it, to do it correctly, I'm going to pull that tight, and then I'm going to put my finger there. I'm going to hold those loops down. I'm going to hold them in place so they don't get away from me, and I'm going to gently pull the thread all the way through and there we go then we have a nice little knot we didn't let those loops get away from us so that's that um so that's what may be happening um so those are the three things so if you have any of those issues you, you end up with just a little stitch you end up with pulling your knot all the way through to the back or you end up with the these crazy loop-de-loops um those are the three corrections you can make. So uh, you may be doing one or all three of those. Uh, let me know. Let me know if you guys are having any trouble with this. And um, yeah, I'd love to hear. So I'm actually going to cut all these out now because <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to redo those. So we got some nice, nice little knots in there. So let's just cut the backs of all these and then I'll pull out all those knots. But yeah, so let me know if, if you've had trouble with French knots at all. I know when I, when I realized, oh, it's those three things, then uh, uh, my knots just got better for sure. 
Okay, this is the part that I wove in and it's, it's pretty solid in there, but I'm gonna try and pick it out. All right, now we're gonna try and cruise through. I do wanna, we'll do these knots at the bottom and then I want to go up here and do these lazy daisies and satin stitches so we can really um, get as much done on this tonight as we can just because I'm not sure like I said I'm not sure if I'm gonna be here anymore this week um, so I'll miss you guys but we'll see uh, but like I said I do want to finish this and do that lining so I might try and squeeze in a little weekend stitching one of these weekends. It won't be this weekend because um, I'll be out, like I said. But um, maybe next weekend, maybe next weekend if I'm not done with this. Well, I won't be done with it tonight. But so maybe next weekend um, while it's still June, uh, while this is still available uh, for you guys to stitch with me, uh, we'll finish it up and then... Uh, will make a little lining to put in it. I think that will be kind of fun. I'm excited for that. Cause then it'll, it'll first of all, it'll look really cute, but it'll also protect our stitches. Cause if you're gonna use this a lot, like if you're throwing books in here or like, you know, I don't know, swimsuit stuff or, or whatever, you're not gonna wanna, or like a, like a hairbrush or something that, that would grab onto threads, you know, no matter how tightly or how, how well we weave in these ends or anything, I mean, you know, if you're throwing stuff in here, it might catch on something, right? So a, a lining would be just like a nice thing to help solve some of that. All right, some of, it looks like some of you guys, um, some of you guys popped over from Facebook, so, so that's good. So in that case, maybe if I do come on tomorrow, like I said, I, internet's going to be spotty and, uh, and I'm not... I'm not quite sure if it's going to work. <laughs> I'm actually not quite sure if I'll even be back from looking at this place with uh, John's parents. Um, but if I do come on, maybe since Facebook is does look like it's being weird today, maybe I will try to do YouTube instead. So l let's just make that decision now. I'm going to attempt to do a live on YouTube. I haven't done that directly with the phone, but we'll... We'll see. So that's a bummer. It's always one one or the other. I mean, it'll go well for a few days, and then one will kind of piddle out here and there. All right, I'm going to just uh, keep jumping around and do these dots. I know I'm going to be jumping around a lot on the back, so I'm, I am going to have some bigger loops, some bigger jumps on the back. But I think that's fine especially if we put a lining into this. So this will be good. So this weekend uh, um, I will look at uh, how we might put a lining into this. I'm excited for that. And I'll give you guys some specs so you know what to have. And I'll, I'll schedule it out. So we'll, we'll figure out when the best time to do it is. But yes, because next week we'll be working on the Aurifil block of the month. I did get a chance to look at it. So it's got Sashiko stitching in it, and it's got curved piecing. So it's going to be quite the deal. Um, so we're going to be doing a lot of stuff with that Aurifil block that I haven't done a lot of, that I'd kind of like to do more of. Um, I haven't done Sashiko embroidery. Um, so in... In that piece, she's using special fabric, but I think we can just do it on our gray fabric. Um, I'm just gonna need some sort of way to, like, I'll have to transfer a design, so I'll have to find a design for that or something. I don't know. I'm not quite sure, not quite sure how we'll do the Sashiko stitching on on the Aurifil block. I don't know, did, did all of you guys look at the Aurifil block of the month? It came out earlier this week and then my block is gonna be next month my block is july and i'm really excited about that i think it's gonna be fun but yeah so anyway next week we'll be stitching the orophil the june orophil block of the month but like i said i do want to still finish this sometime um in the month of june so i think that might 
mean a next weekend stitch along and I'll I'll look at a calendar a little bit more but it could be like a fun Saturday stitch along I think that'll be nice all right I'm glad it looks like uh, some of you have made the switch from from Facebook right now yeah, sorry, it's a kind of, yeah, I, I can see Facebook just chopping in and out, and I'm not quite sure why it's doing that, because my, my connection seems to be okay. All right, two more here. You know what, there's a few more over here. Maybe I should just try and get those other two. I'm not going to have anything to weave in these stitches, though. Maybe I'll just do these two. We'll worry about those other ones when we do that side. There's a whole lot of yellow French knots going up on on this edge here so we'll we'll deal with those later I'm gonna just get this last one here and then I think I actually might jump over to here to weave in my ends we'll just do deal with that typically I would do French knots last because I don't you know here's why I don't like knots on the back it's the same reason I don't like not like French knots on the front while I'm still stitching is because I could be stitching uh, like over here and not realize that I've gotten myself caught on a little French knot here or something. So just that little knot above the surface can be tricky. And that's why, yeah, why I don't like them on the back because they can get caught. So this is a little bit of a struggle too because I am trying to make sure that I'm not, that I'm holding the stitches down still, but I'm not accidentally like grabbing <laughs> the back of my bag we're still dealing with a bag that we have to leave open and stuff but all right I'm gonna weave in the ends I'm just gonna kind of jump down to here and just weave in the end here and I think we that's all we'll do for those yellow French knots at the bottom and we're gonna move over to those um lazy daisy stitches and uh we'll see what's happening over there oh someone asked about the back and uh here we are this is what the back is looking like so far i'm gonna have to move move the hoop so we can look at it a little bit better was this a sashiko design on the fabric or was it embroidery sashiko so sylvia um for the for the Orofil Block of the Month, it was a special fabric with a sashiko design printed on it, and then she stitched on top of it. However, that is not how you have to do sashiko. You can, um, it doesn't have to be a pre-printed fabric, but that that is what it looked, uh, that is what she used in um, that design. Here's the back. Uh, we won't be doing that because I don't, I don't have any pre-printed sashiko fabric. Uh, so we will be just having my gray fabric that I've been using in all the blocks. And um, I suspect it'll be the gray fabric. And we'll figure out a way to do sashiko on there. So it might be, I might have to read some tips on the interwebs on, on the best way to do that. And I'm sure there's designs there um, designs that we can download and stuff too. We'll, we'll figure it out. So I'll look into that a little bit and we'll figure it out for, for next week. Luckily, um, the embroidery, the sashiko embroidery stuff that will come last. We have a whole curved piecing and stuff to do yet for that sashiko block. So we can be figuring out how to do the sashiko part of it. So sashiko is just a form of embroidery. It's a lot of, um, it looks like it's just basically a running stitch. That's where you just go in and out and in and out in a, like a dashed line. And, uh, but following a pattern, like like there's like a cute circles pattern um, that's, that's in the example. Okay, so what do we have going on next here? So we have more of these little French knots that we could do. We also, you know, we, we never finished our green. Gosh, we could almost just do that first, finish up the green. Uh, but I do want to do these flowers. I'm going to do flowers. I feel like doing flowers. So let's, these outsides are a single chain stitch or a lazy daisy stitch. Uh, so we'll do those. And then the inside is a, 
uh, we're filling it up with yellow satin stitches. So I think, I think I'm going to start out by doing the outsides and we'll just do till we run out of thread, which honestly will probably be just two. Uh, it does take a quite a bit of thread. Um, these lazy daisy stitches. Let's see, we have some pink already here. So the pink, uh, is these flowers. So I'm going to weave into the end, to the backs of these stitches and then we'll just do these lazy daisies. Barbara says there's a lot, lots of free Sashiko designs online. Yeah, it's just, it's just kind of geometric straight or uh, shapes. So you could just even do, you know, lines would, would do the job too. And you know, who knows, maybe we'll end up just doing that. We'll see. Oh, you couldn't find a design for doing the stitch. It's, it's not necessarily just, well, it is just basically a running stitch. I don't think, I mean, maybe you'd find something if you looked at Sashiko stitch, but I don't think it's really like a special stitch. It's just a running stitch, but there are, yeah, like Sashiko patterns. So you might be able to find, you know, like a bunch of little circles or little squares and it just looks really refined and pretty and, and nice. Uh, but yeah, so I will, I will look around and see what I can find too. I'm assuming I had three threads in here that we split it already. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's do this flower. So same thing, um, that we've been doing with these leaves except there's one little difference and it, it's just a preference. So you can see that a lot of these bottoms are a little bit open. So they didn't start and stop in the same spot. That's fine. It's, it's just basically the same process. So I'm coming up on, I don't know if you can quite tell in this one, but I'm coming up on one side and I'm just going to go into that other. So it's like your start and end point. So it'll just have a little open, open bottom, um, which I think is just kind of cute. So, uh, there it'll be more, more like, like that with an open bottom. You could do it with a closed bottom like this, where we come in and out at the same point there, but I think this is kind of cute too. All right. So I'm kind of doing this stabbing method here. I'm going to have to get used to the sewing method of this. So, okay. I'm going to start at the one side. Maybe I just get, I get situated here again. There we go. All right, and then ending at that other side, I'm just coming up to the top. Let's wrap that thread behind the needle there. All right, cute. Leave them a little lazy so they have that, that nice uh, arc to them. Oh, uh, Rebecca says eQuilter has some fabric with printed designs. Oh, but they're not, oh, they're not long enough for this design. Uh, interesting. So yeah, I, I know I, I've seen designs out there. I just haven't dug into it very much yet. So uh, maybe we can uh, figure it out. And actually, you know what? It might be an easy enough thing that we can create, create ourselves here. Uh, so we'll, I'll look into that as well. It will be a crafting adventure for sure. Like I said, I haven't done a lot of curves like that. Um, I don't know if all of you have checked out the design, but there is some curved piecing. That'll be kind of interesting. Oh, these are looking just sweet. Gosh, I might not even get through this one with the, uh, with the pink. That's why there's a lot of pink in the, you know, I have, I have this bundle here, which is pretty fat. There's a lot of pink in here and it's because these lazy daisy stitches just suck up the fabric, suck up the thread, I should say. All right. I'm doing that last little anchor stitch and starting the next stitch at the same time. I'm getting it down, getting the, the uh, 
sewing method down here. Again, the sewing method of embroidery is when you go in and out in the same motion. Uh, so you can see both parts of the needle there. Then I'm not pulling it all the way through to the back because then I'm in danger of like hooking on to one of these back little bits or the handles here. Um, and again, you do want your fabric a little looser in the hoop when you are doing this sewing method. Just makes it a little easier to get in the right spot. If it's too tight, then it can be difficult to um, be more accurate. Oh, thanks, thanks, Rebecca. Rebecca says those flowers are so pretty. I think they're they're just fun. It's definitely gonna brighten up this this guy's little setting for sure. And we'll do those little satin stitch um, middles there. I mean, this definitely adds some dimensionality. Like they, they really, they do look 3D here. They little, they poof up a little bit. Oh gosh, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna have enough to start this next flower. I might have just enough to do like one or two little stitches, and maybe, maybe you know what? Maybe I will try and do those one. And, oops. I missed the thread there. Let's get in the center of this loop. There we go. Yeah, I'll, I'll have enough for a couple. So we'll try and do two just for the sake of saving some thread here, but I'm not gonna have enough to do too much. Maybe two little uh, petals, maybe not even, we'll see. Oops, I twisted that one a little bit. Oh well, that's fine. Um, all right, so I'm gonna just, let's come up to this one. I think that's as good as any. All right, and oh, we could probably do a few more. That's good. We'll get a couple. Oh, Gina says Alyssa Blair has a series on Sashiko. Ooh, we may, we may have to look at that. Do you think I'll be back? Uh, back? Go back to the other way of stitching on uh, next month's project. Uh, probably Grace. Uh, so Grace is asking if if I'll go back to the other way of stitching for the next project, and um, I'm I'm guessing she's meaning the stabbing method versus the sewing method, the in and out sewing method that we're doing now. Most likely because. I'm just more used to it. It feels more comfortable in my hand. Although maybe, maybe I'll do a combo of the of the two, um, just for practice. Because it doesn't hurt to, you know, see if I can get a little bit better at this or a little bit more precise. I guess that's my biggest concern with it. but I'm definitely not gonna give up this, the stabbing method for sure. All right, this is gonna be my last last stitch here. I'm gonna have just enough to weave in. Ugh, actually, there's not a lot here to finish this stitch. And uh, uh, some stitches just are better doing the sewing method. I like the stem stitch is really great using the sewing method. And then some are just better for the stabbing method. Like those French knots were much easier for me using the stabbing method. All right, we got four extra little petals out of here. I'm gonna weave in my end. I think I have a little, ugh, I was gonna say, I think I have a little shorter piece of this pink from earlier, but I don't think it's gonna get me much. So I might just cut more, more floss right away of the pink. All right. Snip that up. Cute, it's looking so sweet. Um, all right, yeah, let's, let's cut some more pink. 
We'll do another piece of pink and see where we get. Um, you know, we'll probably get through, maybe, maybe we'll probably just get through these two. And then I think, why don't we pick up the, well, yeah, we'll pick up the green again and get a little further with this green, or maybe we'll do yellow. Then we can do the inside of all these, um, inside of the flowers, and we can get these French knots at the same time. We'll do yellow next, okay. So right now, we're gonna do another thing of pink. So I'm just cutting all these all at once. Let's grab the pink out of here. Coming up with my plan, my next steps plan. Oh, Colleen, yes, I did demo the knots already. I will, um, so you'll, you'll have to look at the beginning of this video on the replay. I did it right away though. That's the first thing we did. Um, so you can, so you can watch that again, Colleen. And, and I'll be doing a couple more knots right now. I won't, I won't run through the three things you might be doing wrong this time, but it is at the beginning of this video. So you can, you can, um, I'll, I'll talk through it, but if you're, if you're having issues with French knots, then I'd for sure just rewatch that beginning. Oh, Barbara says, I already migrated back to the stabbing method. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, that's the thing. If, if you're used to one way of doing it, I mean, that's just, it's going to feel better. It's going to feel more comfortable. It's going to be like, in theory, less repetitive stress just because your body's used to it a little bit. But uh, yeah. We're, uh, this is, this is good practice though. This is good practice for me to, to get a little bit more comfortable with the sewing method. Cause uh, like I said, sometimes it just works better. And, um, in that case, I'm happy I have a little, little practice, but yeah, in this case for sure, I think it's just works better just cause not because of the stitches, but because of the physical nature of what we're, what we're stitching. So if you're stitching other things like, I don't know, like a tote bag or something else, um, or like a zipper pouch or something, this might be the way you w might want to go about that too. Okay, where did I end there? I started way up here. Okay, but then I'm gonna, I think I should, I think I should start here. So I end over here, because otherwise I'm going to end down here and I want to end closer to this flower. So. Um, I'm just going to jump all the way down there. That's fine. Going the other, other way around. It will work too. Oh, Gina said that she's always done the sewing method. Oh, that's awesome. Yep. Uh, it's, however, however you're taught, I think, I suspect that the sewing method is probably the more traditional way of, of learning. I don't, I don't know that for a fact, but I suspect, um, that that might be the case. Cause I know, I know stem stitch is very popular in some old patterns like old dish towels and that sort of thing uh, oftentimes it's with a stem stitch and a stem stitch is really odd and difficult to do if you're using the stabbing method but it's easy and fun to do using this sewing method so i suspect uh just based on uh, that theory that because I've seen a lot of dish towels and a lot of early stuff use a lot of stem stitch, I suspect that um, the sewing method was probably taught more. Like I said, it's just a conjecture. <laughs> I don't know that for a fact. Oh, Barbara says that she thinks she learned the sewing method. How many strands of thread are you using on the pink daisy? Sue, I am using three. So I have been using three throughout this whole process. If you want them bigger and fluffier, but you still want to use the same stitch, go for more strands. Uh, this, this particular fabric that this is printed on, it's easy, easy to pull more strands through. You might have some difficulty if you're 
um, using like a, a, a tightly woven quilting weight fabric or something, uh, it's a little more difficult to pull that many strands through. But yep, you could, you could do more if you want it more delicate, more little. Uh, you could use less strands. You could use two strands or one strand. But I am, I'm using three. That's what I'm using throughout. Oops, caught that funny. I'm at a goofy angle now for this. Okay, one more here, and then we'll hop up onto the that next one, and we'll just do that one until I'm out of floss here. And then we'll come back and we'll do the yellow uh, for the French knots and the satin stitches. So we'll just kind of hop around and work our way up, I think, until we're out of thread again. Then we will move on to whatever happens next. Okay, so I'm going to just pop up to one of these guys. Just kind of the closest one, finishing that anchor stitch, and I'm going up here. Oh yeah, we don't have that much left again, so we'll probably get like four out of this, like what we did last time. Ooh, they're cute though. They're fun. I like these a lot. Oh yeah, these are some bigger front or bigger uh, lazy daisy stitches too, so they're gonna use even more thread. That's the one thing with these lazy daisies is that you just really feel like you're using up so much thread, you know, especially compared if you're doing like just a back stitch or something else. Feels like you're wasting it, but nope, that's just what it takes. Oh, I like this pink though, it's fun. Oh my gosh, so this is about the color that my room was painted when I was little. <laughs> Maybe a little lighter. So I don't know if I ever told that story. We were little, like, I don't know. Single digits, <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, uh, we were moving and it, I got to have, um, my brothers got a, their room and I got to have my own room. Uh, and uh, the painters were there and I, this, which doesn't make sense because they wouldn't have had this color already. But like uh, they asked or mom asked or someone asked, what color do I want my room? And I panicked <laughs> and just said pink. Uh, and uh, I don't, I didn't especially like pink. I don't, I hate when all women's clothing or like I hate when women's shoes even like work boots have to have pink on there somewhere um that drives me crazy that you know yeah out of all those shoes they had to have the pink on or whatever so even when I was little I wasn't too keen on pink but I panicked um said pink and then I was stuck with a pink room which is fine I mean I didn't, you know, it's not that big of a deal that I was like, oh, pink every time I saw it. But I remember that act of panic saying pink and then my room ended up pink. <laughs> so, so this is, this is pink. I'm, I'm much friendlier to pink now, except for when they put it on all women's clothing, uh, like shoes, just because women need pink apparently so that just drives me nuts but anyway <laughs> or you know i was trying to buy um protective glasses today or, or john and i were just uh, so we can have in the shop um and uh the the women's size they were all pink like the the um the handles on the on the glasses or the arms, whatever. I don't know what those are called. Uh, those were just all pink and it's like, okay, I can't buy women's safety glasses without them being pink. I, anyway, I do like pink. I just don't like when that is the only choice because you're a woman. <laughs> so anyway. Long story short, this pink looks a lot like what my room did growing up. 
Uh, actually, closer to my, my nail color, really. I like my pink nails. But I chose those pink nails. <laughs> oh, thanks, Jackie. Jackie says, watching you so is, uh, is relaxing. Watching me sew and complaining about the color pink. All right, there we go. Um, so I, I got yellow here now. I'm going to, I think I'm going to start with satin stitching this feller here. And uh, um, then I, I'll jump and do these little bits here, the little French knots probably come back up here and then do this guy a couple more French knots then we can do this guy although I don't know if our thread's gonna last that long but we'll we'll see what we can do so all right we are ready with this new floss I'm gonna weave it into this area here we'll start with that um, satin stitch so we we did do a little satin stitch already not tonight but that's how we did the the uh, heart that's how we did his nose and his mouth. All right, our right, three times. Oh, Connie's finishing up a pink quilt tonight. Fun. Okay. Yeah, I think, Grace, that's kind of what I didn't like growing up that it was expected that pink was for me and, you know, my brother's got blue stuff. <laughs> Rebecca, I do love pink. So I, th that's just, that's the, that's the silly thing is that I do actually like pink. I just, the expectation of pink, I think that's what I don't like as much. All right, I'm going to attempt to do this satin stitch. I started in the middle. I'm going to just kind of cross over here and do one side and then do the other. Um, you can go whatever angle you want, but I think I'm going to try the sewing method again, where I go in and out. I I don't ever do that with satin stitch, although I did do it here. Uh, I am trying to get used to that sewing method, so we'll see how it goes. But I'm always starting on one side and ending on the other, and I am trying to go a little bit on the outside of these black lines, just so I'm covering them up. And these are itty bitty, so these these little guys won't take much thread. I think I can get one more in here though. Let's do one more stitch on the edge here. There we go. And now I'm going to, I'm going to hop back up. Oh, I probably didn't need this last one, but we got it. I'm going to hop back up to the center and do the other side here. You wouldn't have to do satin stitch for these, but I think it does add just some roundness to the center of the flower. I think it's actually kind of pretty. I, I like it. I think, I think that's all we're going to do. We're going to finish this one stitch and I'm going to jump up to one of these French knot areas in the same motion. Oh, what the heck? Well, that didn't work. <laughs> how did I end up over here? All right, you guys, I do not know how that ended up. I must have jumped out of my initial spot. Let's try that again. I was like all the way up here. Just trying to go right here. There we go. And now get that other spot. There we go. Sheesh. What the heck? All right. Well, anyway, there we got our little satin stitch center done there. I think that's kind of sweet. All right. Let's do these three French knots. All right. Uh, so just to go through this again, I have come up on one side of my dot. I am not going to go right in the center because I don't want to go in the same place that I started. I'm going to start on this side and I'm going to end on the other side. So we're kind of wrapping around that dot. All right. So I'm holding the floss away from uh, the fabric about two inches in my left hand here. And then I'm taking my right hand uh, and I'm pointing towards my left hand or away from the fabric with the needle. So I'm not pointing, I'm not pointing towards the fabric. I'm pointing towards my hand and we'll wrap around twice. And then I'm going to hold those loops, get that thread out of the way. And now I'm going to point towards the fabric. So this is the first time I'm pointing towards, I'm going to go on that other side of that dot, 
just about halfway through with the needle. Then I will pull those loops tight to my fabric and then I'm gonna hold them there. I don't want them to loosen up on me, so I'm gonna just pull through slowly. There we go, French knot number one. Let's do these other couple ones. I'm gonna just speed through them. Could you do a cluster of French knots for the center? Sue, I love that idea. Maybe let's do that for the next one. That would be very pretty. Uh, if you versus the satin stitch. I like that idea a lot. Let's give that a try. I think that's kind of the fun thing about embroidery is that it, it, kind of like a coloring book, you have your you have your like outlines basically, but then what you do inside those outlines or to those outlines in embroidery is totally up for you. you. Up to you, you can do any stitch you want. You can fill things in. Um, you know, with a coloring book, you can do different colors or do some shading or whatever it is. But I kind of feel like it's the same thing. You get, you get your outline and then it's up to you, whatever you want to do with it. All right, I think, yeah, let's do these other two. Just because they're hanging out on the side here. I don't know when I'll do those again. I think these are all yellow. Yeah, just double checking. I'm double checking. I, I still have my, my pattern out here. Uh, but yeah, all these dots all the way up through are, are yellow. All those dots in place. So I'm not really doing the sewing method for this. So let's try and do that. Let's try and fill this space with, with French knots instead of the satin stitch. I think that'll be fun. And I think that might be all we really get done tonight. So I'm, let's see, how should we think about doing this? I could start on one side and just keep filling in French knots, or I could, I could do like a French knot in the center and kind of do like a couple rings around. Um, I think, I think, I think I'll just kind of stay on the edge and kind of go back and forth and fill the space. Kind of, I, I guess, kind of a little bit like how I did the satin stitch, but we'll start on like one side here. We'll see how it goes. Oh, that's pretty cute. This is going to be cute with um, all French knots in here. I'm just trying to get it on that dark outline too. Fun. Okay, I'm going to do one up on this side. Then we'll do a couple in the middle. Let's see, how many is this going to take me? Cute. Let's get one in the middle. I think really one in the middle and then a bunch all the way around would probably do it, but I am kind of, I'm, I'm still going left to right here. We'll see. Oh, this is sweet. I like it. So I'll, uh, when I'm done here, I'll show you really close up the difference between the two. They just, uh, they're both filled in, but they just have different textures. So this is a, a fun idea. Ooh, yes. So Sally is saying that, that this would be pretty with seed beads as well. I'm telling you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to break those out one of these days again. Um, I have oodles of seed beads from, um, I used to make a ton of beaded bracelets when I was little. And I still have all, all of that stuff around and 
you know, some of the colors are really pretty. I'd love to try and incorporate some of that into embroidery. Might even have some beading needles yet. So beading needles are long, super duper duper thin needles because they have to go through those seed beads. Um, so that can be tricky unless you have the right needle. I'm really filling this in now, but I want to cover up that black. So we're going to add a couple more. This is just going to be a huge big blob of yellow in the middle, which I think is actually kind of nice. I'm going to do this one and one more, I think. Ah, okay. I really like it. Uh, let's get one more though for this little spot here. And uh, then I'll, I'll show you guys up close. Actually, I'm going to try and use up this yellow quick too. I'm going to try and get a couple more French knots out of here. Then, uh, then I'll show you guys up close, but let's use up this floss. I don't have that much left. Oops. I think I'll probably like trade off doing, like I'll do a couple more. Like maybe I'll do, I, I really like the French knot. So maybe I'll do three French knots and three satin stitches or something. Well, we do have quite a bit to go on this. So um, this would be like a, a long uh, Saturday project. Um, do I have enough? I might have enough for this satin stitch in here. I'm going to just, oh, was I going to do that? French knots though. Okay, I think in lieu of making an actual decision, I'm going to just, since I have barely any floss left here, I'm going to just weave it in. And we'll make that decision later, like which one goes where. And regardless, it'll, it'll all take more floss. So let's take a look. Trim this little piece up. All right, so here we are. Uh, so that's what those two look like. I'm gonna just show you up close though so you can see. So there's the one that's all the little French knots. I think that looks really cute. Uh, and then this is the, the satin stitch one. So it depends what look you want, but for a flower, I think that actually is, is pretty nice. So this has that smooth, like a smooth look versus a like bumpy little center look. But yeah, fun. So there we go, you guys. Um, all right, you know what? I think we are gonna call it there. Uh, so I'd love to see, uh, again, keep sharing in the Penguin and Fish Crafters group on Facebook, because I'd love to see uh, your interpretations. And I, and I am, a lot of you guys are already posting in there and it's so fun to see the colors you're choosing and the stitches and, and all that. And a lot of you are much farther than I am. <laughs> so we actually probably only have like maybe two thirds of this done, maybe even only just a half. So we have all of this to do yet, all the banner. So this might be a good like weekend, weekend stitch along. So it won't be this weekend, but you know what? I think uh, since we're next week is the Orophil block of the month, uh, there is a couple extra, extra days of June uh, before July. So maybe, 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 uh, those last few days that weekend and those, I think it, there's like two days before July, uh, where we're, where we won't be working on a different project probably will, will finish this guy up. I want to finish all the embroidery and I want to put in that lining. So, uh, we will continue this, uh, again later and still in June here. So, all right, I'm going to flip you around. All right. Hello again. So let me show you what this is looking like. Oh, those pinks. Wow, really that yellow pops in that pink. Even from this far away, I can tell that that has a yellow, yellow center. And I always kind of like seeing it with the, the bay closed. You're still going to be able to see everything when, when you have stuff in there. All right, cute, you guys. So we'll keep, like I said, uh, tomorrow, if you guys came in late tonight, I'm not sure I'm going to be here tomorrow. If I am, it's going to be a little different. It won't be the same place. Um, I'm helping, well, I don't know if I'm helping, but I'm going to check out a place with uh, 
John's parents, uh, my husband's parents, uh, they're getting a place in Wisconsin. So we're going to uh, look at that with them tomorrow. Um, so my tomorrow is a question mark, but I still may pop in and uh, stitch this a little bit. I think we've decided that it'll be on YouTube. Uh, when I'm off site here, I can't be on both. So uh, Facebook was acting kind of weird today, today. So we're going to try YouTube um, for tomorrow. We'll see. Again, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> and um, I'll, I'll let you guys know. So regardless, I will post on Facebook uh, what the state of the state is tomorrow. Um, but otherwise, I will be back next week. We'll be working on the Aurifil block of the month for June. And then, like I said, there's the weekend and a couple extra days in June that we will continue on this hedgehog and finish it up. I still have bundles available. I'll still be shipping bundles until the end of the month. So if you want, want one of these bags yourself, I did get enough this time around so that anyone that wants one should be able to, to get one. We, uh, versus running out on the first couple days, uh, I did order an extra amount. So, all right, you guys, thank you again. It has been so nice to hang out with you. Uh, and I will see you, uh, see you later. So have a great evening, you guys. Good night.